Hey everybody, Willie Mays died. The greatest San Francisco giant there was. A man who I was honored to meet during the World Series run when he was in his own restaurant, aptly named 24, nestled right in what we used to call Pac Bell Park. Yeah, my friend Randy Gordon posted these thoughts about him. We lost a legend tonight. Super sad to hear that Willie Mays passed away during the tri tribute game honoring him in the Southern Negro Leagues, two days shy of the big game at Rickwood Field where he roamed the Birmingham Black Barons outfield as a 28-year-old full of so much promise they would become one of the greatest players, if not the greatest player of all time throughout baseball's long history. Western Paradise in Peace, Willie Mays. Very, it is very upsetting. So now uh, we have this CNN segment that features from someone and I know. MLB analyst Eduardo Perez and also with us San Francisco Chronicle national baseball writer and Willie Mays biographer John Shea. John, I... And I start by saying, interrupting John for a moment to say that I'm certain John would be appreciative that someone was recording what he was going to say about Willie Mays and he is the best person to talk about Willie Mays. So here is John Shea of the Chronicle. Thank you for the permission, John. I want to start with you because you spent so much time with Willie uh, writing this biography of him. What of all the accolades that he has received, what do you think is his legacy? that he mentored many. He was a friend of many. When he was young, he was mentored by his father, Willie Howard May Sr. He was mentored by Piper Davis, the manager of the Black Barons in Birmingham. He was mentored by Leo DeRocher once he got to the New York Giants. He was mentored by Monty Irvin, a Negro Leagues legend who was his first teammate on that Giants team. Throughout all that time in New York, he was the guy that everybody looked out for. The Giants moved west in 1958. Suddenly he became the guy that looked out for everybody else. And I'm talking Willie McCovey, Orlando Cepeda, Juan Marichal, the Alou brothers. He was the guy in the clubhouse. He was the guy on the team. So all that wisdom, he got from the Negro Leagues and the Black Barons and his father playing catch as a young boy was all put together and throughout his life he wanted to pay it back and he spent the last many many decades doing just that and look at it now it's like he's going out on his terms it's a full circle moment we're all in Birmingham this yeah. to celebrate the Negro Leagues to celebrate Willie Mays and two days before the Rickwood game, he said, thank you. I got chills hearing that announcement in the stadium where he started his career. John, uh, you know, all the things that he endured, all the players, frankly, of that era who broke into the majors and changed the sport. Well, how did that weigh on him? Did it weigh on him as he went through his career and as he got older? Well, he was signed out of high school by the New York Giants. You gotta remember Jackie Robinson went to UCLA, served in the military. He was in his late 20s when the Brooklyn Dodgers called. He was a grown man and an honorable man. And Willie was a kid. And a year after high school, he was the center fielder on the New York Giants. So he went from the Negro Leagues to an all white league in which he was the only minority in 1950, right out of high school. So he was hearing a lot of the things Jackie Robinson was hearing in 1947. This was only three years later. But he once told me, and I'll never forget this, when he was with the Trenton Giants, the abuse was so heavy, so venomous, and it was time that he had to decide. And he looked at me and said, I didn't know if I wanted to keep doing it. And I'm thinking, and it gave me chills. I would imagine Willie Mays if he gave up because of the racism and the bigots and he wouldn't let 
them win. He overcame and everything yeah. to become American hero, legend, and friend to so many. So, Eduardo, tell me. I know. I'm gonna stop right there. Thank you very much, John Shea, and uh, here's some more about Willie Mays. What's interesting about being African American in America at this time with digital media and television and everything is, and also the, the emergence of African Americans in places you don't think they're going to be, all tied together by digital television and communications, as I said, you find out things that you may normally not have been aware of. When the news that Willie Mays passed on came over our television set, my mom's first reaction was, your Auntie Jeannie almost dated him. And I said, what? My Auntie Jeannie is Jeannie Bird and she lived in Cincinnati. And as mom told the story, she, my Auntie Jeannie was a waitress. Now, why they never got to a point where actually consummated their interest in each other I do not know. And mom is in another room right now, uh, rather tired. So I didn't want to burden her with having to remember everything for a vlog. I figured I'd just do the best I could and, you know, deal with that. But it's, isn't that interesting about how there are these ties that you don't know existed until somebody happens to pop up in the way of television or Facebook or social media. And then once again, you see connections that you didn't know that were there. All right. Willie Mays. So great American, great baseball player, great man. And a great, 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 great representative of San Francisco and the San Francisco Giants in the Bay Area. If you ever go to San Francisco, go to his restaurant, 24. Wow. One correction, folks. 24 restaurant is closed. It was replaced by the public house. So there's no 24 to celebrate Willie Mays anymore, but there is 24 Willie Mays Place. And that is right at what was now called Oracle Park. We used to call it Pac Bell Park, where... Barry Bonds was launching his balls into the drink. Subscribe to Zenny62 on YouTube and bookmark zenny62blog.com.